So this morning we have Tracy Berg of the Mortgage Group and David Neville of First National, and they're going to speak today about mortgages, and, the, and David's a lender, and, um, and take questions. So if you have questions, please either ask for them in the chat or, or uh, turn off your audio and ask away. Thank you for being here. You're very welcome. Thanks Thank for the invite. It's wonderful. So I invited David along. Um, obviously, he would be the one to address questions to. I know when you and I chatted with you, it was more first time home buyers. How can yeah. we help them right now in this market? Yes. Right. Um, there's a few really good options with First National uh, borrow down payment league and credit union do the uh, down payment loan. Yeah. But that is prorated, so the interest rates are double that or almost yep. of what you get if you secured your own with First National it's called a flex down so you can use your own source of funds whether it be a credit card or a line of credit I'd obviously never use a credit card but you oh. can 19% <laughs> interest no issue yeah. so so anyway that's just one of the things um, gifted down payment um, we are thinking more of a Q&A today but those those are the top of mind for me for first time home buyers yeah and I also wanted to hit on a couple of points that have been you know coming coming at me over the last little while is um, a lot of times I get feedback through my brokers like Tracy over timelines on things like appraisals um, turnaround time on um, condition of financing closing dates so I wanted to talk about those because this will help you guys um, trust me um, and actually I'll start off if I can yeah. just jump in Absolutely. so the biggest thing I, I get is um, Tracy gets a deal the condition of financing is in three days and they want to close in two weeks and that's great that's how you <laughs> guys heart yeah but it's fine <laughs> yeah well it's, it's actually not fine because <laughs> when I said fine yeah. fine <laughs> yeah. um, the the issue is in in a lot of instances realtors have done that to win the bid okay mm -hmm. when I say win the bid you don't win the bid if the machine behind it getting the clients their money can't satisfy those conditions mm -hmm. so Tracy gets the file she sends it to me our turnaround time in a busy market like we have right now is three to four business days right now and then Lord forbid you have to get an appraisal and I'll talk about appraisals a little bit more in a minute but Lord forbid you have to get an appraisal that is going you're going to be adding in Metro Halifax two weeks to the turnaround time seriously to get an appraisal here in uh, places like rural locations it's going to take uh, upwards of three weeks or longer to get to get a uh, an appraisal done so I'll give you a, just give me a second here I I have notes here and I my computer just logged in so anyway um, so I've got a deal it was we ordered the appraisal last week or the the insurer ordered the appraisal last week and it was uh, the earliest they can do it is May the 11th it's a rural property so I mean the odd time not to interrupt no you could do you could approve them and then send a finance letter say pending appraisal yeah but then that would immediately trigger an extension because essentially it's not firm yet right but yeah. at least the buyer would or sorry the seller would know that the buyer is good yeah. they're just waiting to confirm the property but that's what's going to happen kind of in that yeah. sense yeah so is that more is that more common in rural areas like if we were in halifax proper is that appraisal turnaround time less or is it about the same it's about it, it can be up to two weeks um the problem is um, one of my appraisers, um, Derek Belfontaine, uh, who works for Maritech Appraisals, I did a presentation with him earlier this week, and he says he is booking, regardless of where it is, second week of May right now. Oh, wow. That's just to come out and see the property. So we, and just so you guys know, we have a number of ways um, as a lender, whether it is um, an insurer is involved in the transaction or not, um, whether it's high ratio or conventional is our terminology um, whether an insurer is involved or not we have ways to uh, adjudicate a value um, and see if the value fits um, it's called AVM auto valuation model there's another 
a myriad of different names for it, but it really doesn't matter. It's basically a risk modeling um, that we do based on the property, the client, and all the details that are, that are basically put together on this particular file. And in a lot of cases, we can say, yes, our risk modeling supports that value. Problem over the last little while is, how many of you, and I can't see you, but I'll, put, I'll ask you to put up your hands. I'll ask you to put up your hands. How many of you have had a bid over ask situation? You don't have to put up your hands because it's all of you. We all have had. 100,000, yeah, 200,000. Exactly. Yeah. And guess what that triggers? In a lot of cases, that will trigger an appraisal. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's not that we don't want to, you know, auto evaluate an appraisal, perfectly blunt, is a pain in the ass for us too. Yeah. Um, it slows the machine down. But at the end of the day is, if we can't have enough data to support the, the value of the property, then an appraisal is required. Okay. Um, so the, the short condition of financing and the short closing is one of those things where, again, I, I want you to win the bid, I want you to close on the deal, but the reality of the situation is, in a lot of cases, we can't meet those timelines. It doesn't matter how much pressure is put upon anybody we can't meet those so seven would, lines. Would you agree that, and all of you, <laughs> that it's better to ask for uh, forgiveness than permission? So do the tight closing or condition of finance, then go back and say the client is good pending an appraisal? Yes. Like would that still work better? I think that works better. Instead of trying to push it out and telling them up front? Yes. We're probably going to need an appraisal, but I'll just be like, wah, wah, wah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can, I, can I ask a bit of a clarification? Um, you had just said that if there isn't enough data to support the valuation or the value of the property, what kind of data uh, would be enough to not trigger an appraisal or at least mitigate the opportunity that an appraisal would be triggered? That, that's as, uh, I'm going to turn so you can see my face for the answer. <laughs> that, that's as buried as the property, okay? Yeah. If you're talking cookie cutter house in Clayton Park in a subdivision, I'm just picking a neighborhood out of my head, a cookie cutter house in Clayton Park and everything in the neighborhood listed for 700,000 and sold for 900,000. Right. That'd be fine. Okay. 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 All right. That makes sense to me. All right. So two years ago, um, about two weeks ago, this was the data around Metro Halifax. This time two years ago, there was over 2,000 properties for sale in Metro Halifax for that week. Uh, 2021, there was 1,200 properties for sale. Last week, again, I don't think it was last week, it might have been the week before, there was like 265. Isn't that okay? crazy? So we've got one-tenth of the properties available for sale right now. One-tenth of the properties means one-tenth of the transactions, which means one-tenth of the data to compare it. And when we look at that data, we're looking at sales that have happened within the last 90, to, to 90 days to 180 days. And we've all known, like since last September, the number of sales has gone down in Metro Halifax, supply and demand being what it is. Yes, prices are going up, but we have to be able to justify that, that bid over ask. I will give you this, the stronger your client is, the more likely we are to support a higher value than a lower value, okay? And when I say strong your client, that's, right. Trace, so that's Tracy's yeah. area to, <laughs> to talk to you about your good clients. Get her an application, let her look at it. You know, long-term on job, good income, they, they can more than afford the payment and they have great credit. And I'm talking great credit. Yeah, we're probably gonna be able to maybe mitigate that value a little bit easier, but it still has to fit. We still have to have enough data to go, yeah, there's risk there, but we can get it. And I will give you this, guys. I would say probably 90% of the time, the appraisals are coming in at what the client is paying for the property. Um, but I have seen you know, that 10% where it's not being supported. So, so Dave, I, I just want to say that um, I think it's imperative that we have these conversations about timelines because we want to protect our client and make sure that we, we all respect each other's things that we need to do to put together the deal. It's nice that there is an option though. So whenever there's a challenge, we as real estate agents and consultants, we need to have a solution. So the solution to the fact that keeping in mind the time frames where they're located, all of that of respectful and such. But also the fact that we know now that someone like Tracy can actually write a letter 
and say they're they're approved based upon the appraisal which i've been i've been fortunate i just started not long ago but appraisals come in okay every one of them so it's nice to know that there's a solution That's you're in the, you're in the 90 percent, thank goodness yeah. so uh and you know the other thing that i i kind of see and a lot of you guys like you collaborate with with colleagues and peers right across the country and when you're talking to people in toronto they're like oh, Dale happens all the time. Yeah, that's Toronto. Atlantic Canada has not seen conditions like this ever, okay? This pandemic has definitely brought out a new set of circumstances here. And when I say people in Toronto sit there and go, yeah, it's no big deal, because they know how to do it. But there is another dynamic to what's going on in places yeah, like Toronto. Yeah, yeah, I'm talking. Oh, sorry, <laughs> Tracy brought up. Talking about going into to an offer, waiving all conditions up front, okay? Yeah, or fine. Yeah, so in uh, Canada, if you are borrowing more than 80% of the purchase price, the, the lesser of the purchase price or appraised value, I'll throw that in for the, for the just fine to cover print. my butt. Yeah, for the fine print to cover my butt. Yeah. So if you're lending up to 80%, you do not need default mortgage insurance, okay? We can just lend money to that client without having to get CMHC, Sajin, or Canada Guarantee to insure. Can I just stick in one thing? I yeah. Some lenders back end insure. Yeah. Even if you have default, even if you have twenty percent. Yeah. First National, we're good to go. But yeah. so I'm just throwing that out there because it's not always waived. So you might hear, but they put twenty percent down. I'm not paying default. No, you're not. But the lender may require it, so it's still there even though the client isn't paying the premium. Yeah. So then you have to fall under the insurer's guidelines again. If yeah. they require it. And that happens with us as well. We yeah. have both. So just it's, more so in the other terms. Sorry, but in, in, no, that's okay. <laughs> just in more general terms. Yeah. So um, also in, in Canada, if a property is valued at $999,999.99, such a purchase price, <laughs> okay, a not a million, just not all the nines, <laughs> um, that property can be insured. If it's a million dollars or higher, it can't. And again, this is new to our region, but it's happening all the time, um, that we are getting properties that are valued over a million dollars, or the purchase price is over a million dollars, I should say. Um, in Toronto, most of your purchase prices are floating in that range. They do very little what we call high ratio or insured business in places like Toronto. Everything is 80%. They all have 20% down payment. The reason I'm telling you this is because the home prices are so high because they come in with 20 percent down they have a myriad of more options in places like toronto i will get to my point they will <laughs> they're putting 20 percent down so first national we're first choice for a lot of brokers they bring it to us and the client doesn't fit whatever the reason is doesn't fit with us maybe the debt servicing is out maybe the credit's a little weak whatever it might be they don't fit with us and then we have our competitors and maybe their policies will allow that deal okay then we have the next level, which we call A minus. Doesn't matter what it's called, but it's called A minus. And we we those lenders will, you know, maybe do a little bit, you know, are a little more flexible on what they're doing. Then you have the alter, what we used to call B lenders, the alternative lenders or B lenders. They'll do a little bit weaker client or higher debt servicing. Then you have private lenders. All of them willing to do 80% on a purchase. Every single one of them. Minimum, the, not always guaranteed. Not always guaranteed, but they'll they'll do yeah. they'll do eighty percent, and it's just a matter of the rate. So in places like Toronto, you go, eh, you're kind of sketchy. I'll send it here, and then I'll send it here, 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 and here. And at the end of the day, is there's a good chance there's, be you're going to get approved. It's not that you're not going to get approved. There's probably a really good chance as long as the real estate's not like higher rate larger down payment, but yeah. chances you're going to get it somewhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We don't have that here. We don't. About <laughs> we have more options. But. Yeah. About 60% of the business I did last year was high ratio and short. So you can understand that we don't get that as often here. And because we don't get it as often here, we don't have as many options. If your client only has 5 or 10% down payment, um, they don't have the tiered options. So when you're going in with a client who has needs a high ratio mortgage and doesn't have any more money, you can't go into them with a with a firm offer, with a, all conditions waived. It's yeah. just, 
they're they're done. If the insurer says no, that's the end of it. There's no. And if they waive their firm, and at the very least they'll lose their deposit, possibly be sued. Right? Yeah. yeah. If the appraisal falls in short, they're going to have to make up the difference. Like their firm, as soon as they sign. So in the land provinces that I run, I think you shared an article I put up because they were saying trying to get rid of them because there's actually a reprieve, isn't there, David? At West, did you read that? What's that? That they're trying to push that away. They're trying to give clients some cushion room, even if they waive financing. There's a get out timeline for them. Yeah. Because they're trying to get them to not waive, but they've got that cushion there for them. Yeah, and they're in Ontario. They're looking at waiving the blind bidding process, so it's yes. more like an, an eBay auction, and you can see what the highest price and just come in and bid on yeah. it. Yeah. Um, don't agree with that. No. Like, that's stupid. <laughs> I, I I personally agree with blind bidding, but that's just my. Yeah. my sensibility I have had Ontario clients want to waive financing mm. for it to look better but need a mortgage and I say if you need a mortgage we're checking the box yeah 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 well the thing is it's a false sense of security given to the sellers Absolutely. it means nothing yeah. all it means is that the buyer is now at a very high risk yeah. Yeah. for unforeseen circumstances like I've had a lawyer be declined because it found out he paid forty two hundred dollars a month in child support and that wasn't on his application. I couldn't know that until down the road, right? Yes. That's not something you find in the pre-approval process. I had a veterinarian uh, moving from Ontario. She made 300 grand a year. Well, two properties didn't show up on Equifax, but they did on TransUnion. Her ratios didn't fit. So even the, you know, the glistening clients that look, oh, it's a doctor, it's a lawyer, it's a vet. Yeah. You don't know, so it's just not worth putting them at risk. I, I think the best rule of thumb is, as a, as a real estate professional, leave the mortgage professionals to make a decision on whether you can wait. Yeah, if somebody anything. touched base, like if it's a die, you know, do or die situation, I'm pretty thorough in my pre-approvals. I get everything with a pre-approval. I won't even give a pre-approval letter until I see all the income documents. Because nine times out of ten, they round way up on the income yeah. and way down on the debt. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how'd you yeah. make an extra ten grand last year? I don't see it. But so I'm pretty thorough. So if an if an agent reached out and said, look, we have no choice. Can we waive financing? I would do the verbal with the employers. I would make sure all boxes were ticked and I'd do the best I could with at the same time disclosing to the client that this is still a risk because it's me saying yes, right? We haven't submitted it, but yep. I would do my best to help, but I would highly yeah. recommend not to ever do that. And, and another thing, just from my point of view, this is not you know my company speaking, this is me speaking. Um, you know, never, never waive an inspection. Inspection's your 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 bailout card, right? So you know, <laughs> I've seen a lot of inspections. Inspections. That's not has the echelon home warranty. So oh, well, whatever. <laughs> home inspections are still that doesn't cover cracked foundations. No, so, it does not. Um, we are also and there was an article yesterday. I don't know if any of you read it, but it was basically an article saying, you know, the real estate market in Halifax is hot. You can. And I'm paraphrasing, sell any piece of crap right now because the demand yeah. is so high. Yeah. And when I say, I funded almost 4,400 mortgages last year, okay? So I see a lot of business, and that's all over Atlantic Canada, but I see a lot of transactions. And that's not me being braggadocious. I just want to tell you that my vision of what's going on is pretty good in this market. I am seeing a lot of properties fail on inspection. Um, you know, there, there's some lipstick on a pig and they get to the inspection stage and there's a lot of problems and a lot of problems. Um, got one yesterday, there was a body buried in the backyard. Oh, Just dear that, God. Yep. oh dear God. <laughs> yep. Like that one. Wow. Thank you, realtors, for having the, uh, the disclosure <laughs> statements. The, uh, yeah. Like body in the backyard. The body in the premises. Yeah. Uh, I won't get into Yikes. details. Let yeah. your imagination carry. It was from the 1800s. Don't worry about it. But anyway, it was disclosed, regardless. But was anyone you know, in prison from that house? Yeah. Yeah. Did the signs say this house is not haunted? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Anyway, yeah. we're we're still doing the deal. It's not stopping <laughs> anything. No so, yeah. um, but it point. is. You just know where the bodies yeah, are. Right. Yeah. So, so my my point being is, I've seen tons and tons and tons of deals, and I've seen a lot of deals fall on inspection, especially lately, because again, 
people are somewhat desperate to buy. First time home buyers are being really, really priced out of the market right now, yeah. hugely priced out of the market because, you know, Halifax prior to 2020 was a place where you could buy your first home for, yeah, 200 to, yeah, 200, 300,000 know. dollars. Um, now, you know, I live in a split in Middle Sackville, it's old, it's probably, I could probably sell it for 500,000 right now. Is it worth that? Not a chance, <laughs> not a chance. It's a nice house, it's not a nice house, yeah. you know? It's a 1985 split, what do you expect? Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is what is being sold, okay? And I know you guys go through listings, there's, um, there's a lady on, I like TikTok, so I'm just saying it's, it's, funny. Be it's better than TV. Um, and there's a lady, uh, Jackie. Jackie Rostick. Yeah. Rostick, yes. yes. She, I just, I, I think she's awesome. Anyway, Jackie has a feed and she shows what properties have listed and sold for. Mm -hmm. And uh, she's on, I guess she's on the board of the Real Estate Association. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure. In the SRA, yeah. I think, or she used to be. Yeah. Um, she's a platinum group, right? Is that I think so, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Scott, think yes. Scott, and Jack, right? Jackie shows these ones, and I have yet to see one where it listed here and sold here. It's always listed here and sold here. Yeah. Um, but she also has told some stories about properties that have failed on inspection. I see them as well. It's, it's out there. So my point being on this, guys, is, you know, just protect your client. Protect your client. I know it's hard. I empathize with you guys out yeah. there. You know, yeah. trying to get the house, and I know you're probably showing 30 houses, and then they get one, and you're like, we have everything we wanted. Yeah. It's just it's against your advice to a lot of it. Yes, you know? exactly. Again. And I have heard that too, Vicki, that agents are saying, don't wait, but we have to. And no, yeah. You, no, yeah. So I just, I get blunt now and say, okay, so if the appraisal comes short, 40, 60, do you have that? If the insurer won't, if, you know, high ratio won't approve you, do you have a 20% down payment plus? The shortfall on on the appraisal are you good with that and if it's alternative you're looking at a two percent fee and rates over five percent so if you can come up with all that wait yeah yeah they're exactly. going up they're yeah. going up so i've also started to do pre-inspections at all my listings oh okay so that at least i have that information and yeah. then i have my seller has information to fix anything that so you go with up. an inspector yeah, I, I hire them, yes. Do you? Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's awesome. That's yeah. fantastic. That's I, awesome. I was talking to a friend yesterday, and he listed his sold, and listed his sold, listed his house, and sold it over ask. And I said, so what'd you do? And he told me. He did a radon test, he did a water test, he did a pre-inspection, he did. He said, this was a realtor's dream. Yes. Like, come in everything's done copies of it available that's nice just walked so in and, yeah, that's and awesome. uh, so it, when you list you know everything that's there um you know I, I will tell you my viewpoint history shows a lot of really really bad pieces of real estate because i'm looking at them because i'm getting the questions would you lend on this and well i was shocked i want to give the exact address because i don't want it to be the age of it but when i got one on an old duplex and we're talking old, we're talking dusty rose carpet and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, like forest that. green wallpaper with oh, flowers. I yes, I remember that. Really dated, everything was, the paint was chipped. It was, it went for 560. Yeah. Oh, dear. I'm like, um, no. <laughs> <laughs> like, I felt bad for them. They got it, they mm -hmm. got it. But they were struggling for, like, you know, the better part of a year. Yeah. And that's the best they could do for their, couldn't go any higher. Yeah. And as a, as a lender, we are looking at that. If your client has only their 5% down in their closing costs to buy their house, yeah. and the house needs maintenance, yeah. okay, we call it deferred maintenance. It needs the roof to be re-shingled. Tracy has a great product called Purchase Plus Improvements, okay? Mm -hmm. But in her case, your clients were at their maximum they anyway. Max, they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. They couldn't afford anymore to do the improvements. But if they can, she's got a great product called Purchase Plus Improvements. The only thing Purchase Plus Improvements won't do is structural. If your foundation's cracked, if your floor's sagging, yeah. I saw I one with a bow the <laughs> in, the wall, in the basement wall like this. Wow. Like I'm talking, it was 13 inches wow. off at the center of the bow. Um, so yes, you know, for that tired, outdated home, Purchase Plus Improvements is a great option for your clients. You can take that dusty road 
forest green house and you know Beautiful. put some nice gray tones in there i love the gray tones mm -hmm. wonderful yeah. and uh, you know bring it a little bit more up to speed and there's a lot of flexibility in that product as well um if your clients can afford it up to forty thousand. no no 20 percent we, up to 40. we no we you gave, cap don't cap it at 40 anymore wow. Sweet. Wow. Yeah. I <laughs> yep. No, that's new. I went to other, that is new. That, that is new. That were all these. I had to go elsewhere. Yep. Well, now I know, David. Yeah, exactly. Oh, you're my favorite. <laughs> and just a, just a couple other things. I mean, we used to be really hard and fast on rules. Like we would so what, need a max uh, now. Then twenty percent. Regardless. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, it has to be insured or insurable, so your property value has to be under a million dollars. Your bridge yeah. price has to be okay. under a million. That's great. Um, but there there's other things like. A lot of people are going to turnkey builds and you know and nothing wrong with Raymar and Marsh and they're, they're great builders but have any of your client have any of your clients gone to to do a build with Raymar and Marsh and lately what's the time frame on them oh god I think close to a year I think they're over over a year is what I've heard yeah I've like, heard close yeah. to two yeah I've heard you know if you're looking at building in Indigo Shores yeah. um, they're they're saying things like two years right now which yeah. is like that's that's tough to that is hard. yeah but so a lot of people are turning to smaller builders and we used to want something called new home warranty so there's companies like atlantic new home warranty and lux that would put warranties on these properties we've actually said that you know when turnkey builds for smaller builders as long as we have an occupancy permit we can do it so that's another plus that. yeah again that? brand new why am i not getting these updates <laughs> You're getting this. You got it faster than most people. Okay, so, right. like, when I say these are new, like new these new. are new, like okay, well, this week awesome. new. So, yeah. yeah. So again, we're there's a lot of flexibility out there in what you can do. So, yeah. for these properties, um, I just want to circle back to the appraisals and just see because I do have some notes on appraisals. A um, couple of things I think are good for you. It, do you guys have any questions on appraisals that you want to ask or? Can I just give you just a couple of bullet points? Do they still do, I know that there was one appraiser and he would do like a, a book appraisal so he never came out of the house. I had one last summer yeah. that we had to do quick. So you do though, you get appraisers that can just sit, like he sat at his computer and said, yeah, good Some, job. it depends on the property. Yeah. Some will come back full of appraisal required, meaning they yeah. have, they they have to walk in, through, take yeah. pictures, yeah. and all that. So yeah. there's, a, there's basically two scenarios where an appraisal will be done. Number one is we're not insuring the mortgage and we want an appraisal because it doesn't fit value. The other one, the mortgage is insured and the, the insurer orders the appraisal. Now in some cases, we don't do, ever do, we call them a desktop appraisal. We don't yeah. ever allow a desktop appraisal. We want a full appraisal. Okay. We're asked for an appraisal, we want an appraisal. Um, but the insurers sometimes will ask for a what they call a desktop appraisal, which yeah. is basically get me some comps and the basic difference pictures. between the two yeah. pictures, comps, and well, actually, they don't even get interior pictures, they just typically get listing pictures and they'll give you a range of values on that property. So it's it's a little bit, you know, it's a little bit different, but sometimes that's done because the client is a, is a very strong client and we can do that with very strong okay. clients. Or, sorry, we don't do that. The insurers <laughs> can do that. I have to be specific on this. So insurers yeah. will do it, okay? Um, from everybody else, any questions? Does the cat have a question, Jillian? <laughs> Do we have a cat? <laughs> Aww. Aww. <laughs> so I'll just hit you with a couple of things that I used in the presentation I did earlier this week. So the um, question is, what triggers an appraisal requirement by a lender? And I've kind of touched on this, but I'll just read you my, my response is typically there are not, there's not enough data to support the value or purchase price. And when I mean data, I mean recent sales. Um, this is very common in the more rural areas or less dense areas um, or areas that don't see a lot of sale transactions. However, uh, sometimes an appraisal is de required depending on the type of deal it is. Some lenders um, that Tracy uses, if it's a private sale, will want an appraisal. Again, that really won't affect you guys. But they categorize a lot of times exclusive listings as private sales. Okay, so if you're double ending the deal, or if you're you're not listing it on MLS and just booking it in house, that is sometimes will trigger it. Um, and for First National client buying a rental property always requires an appraisal. Okay. Um, 
why do lenders require an appraisal if the if there is an agreed upon contract price? And again, this is designed for questions for realtors. So I've kind of already said, you know, if I've always said a house is worth what somebody is willing to pay for it. Until recently. I a house is worth what somebody is willing to pay for it to get it, okay? Because there's such limited inventory that if they want a house, really doesn't matter what, they want to get into the real estate market, they're willing to pay a price for it. So, so for my answer to that question is, for purposes of risk evaluation, and I talk about this a lot, we have to ensure that the price the clients are paying for the property is reasonable, okay? Um, if that client stops paying us and we have to take that home back, I mean, again, we're not anticipating any drop off in value really horribly, but we get, we have to know that, you know, your client is putting $200,000 down on a purchase and they're paying a million dollars for a property and we go out and appraise it and it says it's worth $700,000. You know, we're missing something here like what's going on like why is this client willing to pay 300 more than ask and you know I used to talk in terms of twenty thousand dollars more back in the day it's yeah. it's pretty wild but we have to make sure that we are we're make sure that that property is not overvalued and if we ever do have to take it back if your clients can't pay the mortgage on that thing we have to mitigate our risk and be able to sell it for for what's owed on it okay I can still remember the first one that went 100 over and it made the paper. Yeah. The other one was talking about yeah. that. that one I out was in Hammond, this Hammond's number planes. two. I, I was in on that. And, oh, were you? And I, the guy called me later and he said, that offer came in last minute. He said, you were the winning bid through the whole process. Mm -hmm. And then, boom. That just came him after. And yeah. how much was yours over? Do you remember? Jeez, oh, I think it was 50 over. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and yeah, that was that a lot. That yeah. was a lot. That yeah. was a lot. Yeah, That's what that. I'm I'm noticing now talking yeah. to clients. And they're like, we're going to go in and 10 over asking. I'm like, you should probably just save the paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's not yeah. going to yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, like save a realtor's Friday. Exactly. And writing offers on that. Well, and we're getting very experienced at writing offers. Yes. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> many, many offers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the other one that I, I've got a couple others here, but the one I kind of want to lean on is the question I was asked is why do lenders frown on quick closings? Okay, and I'll read you verbatim. Mainly is that it can create issues and mistakes. Um, it also puts my underwriters, my people that, that approve the mortgages, under a tremendous amount of stress. And if we cannot meet a deadline, then we put our company at risk. Okay, if we say we can underwrite and close something in a certain amount of time we don't, we're, it's a reputational risk for us. The other reason is the F word, and I'm not using the one that I normally drop when I get angry, it is <laughs> fraud, okay? Um, again, Atlantic Canada is this wonderful little place where the sky is always blue except when it's raining and people are nice. But there are other parts of Canada where fraud happens every second of every day. and my company lends everywhere in Canada and we see this. Quick closings are often associated, frauds are often associated with quick closings and vice versa. Um, fraudsters know that if you are pushing a closing and trying to make something happen fast, that maybe things will get overlooked and mistakes will happen. And they count on that to maybe slide a document that might not be legitimate past um, the underwriters so it, it is something that you know we do really frown upon so uh, I understand some people want it so they can win the offer but again it is automatically a red flag and oftentimes like if Tracy came to me and says I've got a closing in in eight days mm -hmm. I'm saying spending the deal today I'll say no yeah. I'll just and flat I always out. check first especially spring market yep but there's also more to that point there's also the lawyers time some lawyers are saying I need five to ten, yeah, five yeah. to ten business days. Yeah. If there's an appraisal, so if you've got a three-week closing or a two-week closing, there's too many people involved to get it to close that quickly. Yeah. On top of what David had mentioned, so yeah. I mean, thirty days is a good quick closing. That yeah. gives everybody time Some to time. do their stuff, make sure everything's good. Yeah. yeah. I consider thirty days a, a normal closing. Yeah. Thirty, thirty to forty. The odd right time now. if somebody shit the bed. <laughs> My professional term. You know, I've had 
deals come to me where somebody messed up the broker or the specialist and they're saying we're down to crunch can't get a hold of this person or I got a decline because of this and the seller won't move then yes David and I've had First National step up and help me in certain circumstances but has to be pretty has to be a big it's a big exception to yeah it but, is a huge exception and they exception. are done but yeah. First National is awesome the underwriting team is amazing yeah but we're human beings and we can only do yeah, so much like and it say, is well it's three days David come yeah on. <laughs> and when I say we're busy we're busy mm -hmm. so you know yet between yesterday and today I'll, I'll close well over 100 mortgages and yeah. that's just for Atlantic Canada just for my region yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty good I looked at those other questions are really not germane to this conversation so I'm just gonna get rid of those so, so um, does anybody have questions yeah. any questions from the Please. peanut gallery out there do we still have the cat no <laughs> I do uh, with regards to the information you've shared. First of all, it's been wonderful information. So getting a lot of new data for myself and hopefully for my clients. Um, wondering if there's a way to share the information that you've been referencing. Like, are you guys able to leave a presentation with us so this that we is, have that as future reference? This is being recorded, right? Yes, it's being recorded. Yeah, this is presentation is actually being recorded. So right, you, you wanted something like paper -wise data, or? paper. <laughs> okay. Oh, oof. Um, I was just winging this, guys. Sorry. I, uh, <laughs> I, I would. If you want, though, we could have a discussion and I could put like just a simple Word document checklist together for you, something like that, if you want to have a chat. Well, I can share my answers to those, those oh. appraisal questions. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Would that be helpful? Like, that would be yeah. great. And yeah. anything at all. Tangibles are great because then when my brain forgets, parts of yep. what we've discussed and even when the recording it's nice to have those tangibles okay. yeah you can always shoot me a text if you're stuck somewhere and you can't think of it <laughs> i'm yeah. pretty quick to answer she is very quick to answer share yeah. oh, good. Yeah. Good. 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 good i don't believe i have the contact information but i'll get that from you vicky yep Perfect. for sure i'll share that okay yep. i have a couple of questions too sorry sure. um it's krista just popping in uh in here so the gift uh, uh, if, if it's a gift a down payment is a gift from another country um, yep. how long does a gift have to be in um, the buyer's bank account especially if it's from another country um, there's no real time frame it'd be really nice if it's in there a few days prior um, I would say a week is a good rule of thumb. There are some lenders out there, and I'm giving you my company's perspective on this, but there are lenders out there that want it into the buyer's bank account 30 days, 30 days prior. Yeah, yeah, 30 days prior. But we don't Most have that. Stuff. We have to see it deposited into your buyer's bank account. Wire um, transfers. Yeah, wire transfers and a lot of documentation. So just understand the sooner you can get that to us the sooner we can review it the sooner we can say that condition has been met because that's the down payment condition yeah. and that's important. And if important. it's a large gift then they're going to want to see the transactions from like from the other from the country of yep. origin. They're going to yep. want to see Any... 30 days on that end as well to ensure. I always okay. refer to it like border security they want to ensure clean money coming into Canada they want to know the source. Yep. It's very similar in housing and that we have to show Yep. clean solid money and that it's not large chunks coming in yeah and it you know just it, we actually look for a 90-day history from the gifter mm -hmm. so three months worth of history from the gifter confirmation that the money was in the account at the time of the wire transfer copy of the wire transfer is that only when it's over a large amount because no it's typical yeah. yeah typically that's if it's coming from foreign foreign lands we do we do require a 90-day history yeah. so uh, we've yeah again you just like me again <laughs> i'm not speaking to what has been what has been done as an exception okay. but i i am telling you that's typically okay. it's 90 no, days that we're that. looking for I seriously didn't. I yep. 30, that's all it nope no it's it's 90 days that we're supposed to be seeing and that's hey, any talk to danielle you just mind your business yeah, no, no. <laughs> i'm reading you the policy manual but the other thing to remember is there are certain countries that are we're not allowed to yeah there's sanctioned that. countries that you Iraq. can't yeah iraq Probably iran russia. russia apparently yeah. russia's yeah. Yeah. i don't know really want there. Yeah. They, have a, they got on somebody's poop list so yeah. uh but yeah um iraq, and tracy tracy knows that list changes like all the time so um tracy has like there you just i bookmark it it's 
you just Google sanctioned countries Canada and she knows the where to look and she'll just look it up and see if the country that the down payment like there's some num countries I've never heard of like yeah. literally never heard of and they're on the sanction list and hey so be it in that case the money has to be moved and then sit yeah. here for a minimum of 90 days yeah but you know it's um, for the most part you know it's uh, it's fairly easy to get monies from foreign lands I mean um, a couple of a couple of countries that we've seen some hiccups with um, China is one because they're capped at how much they can send out of the country so it can sometimes leads to problems Brazil is another country believe it or not that has some issues with getting I've money a lot of Brazil. yeah I'm on the whatsapp apparently yeah yeah well it's it's there's a a lot of yeah. issues yeah, with tricky. getting money out of out of Brazil just because of the economic conditions in Brazil and they don't like large amounts of money leaving the country so but again Tracy knows all this stuff and if she doesn't she refers to me and we figure it out but yeah the down payment coming from foreign lands like especially you know places like India oh just that's easy yeah. like very easy love that so well, that's good. yeah and I have another question <laughs> about um, multi-units. So um, say a first-time home buyer has it in their mind that they want to buy a multi-unit uh, property, um, maybe just two. Is Are there different requirements for um, a mortgage um, if you're buying like an income property along with the residential? Yeah, some, somewhat. There are some different requirements. Um, there's what income we're using to qualify the deal from the from the rental units and down payment are the two biggest things. So if a client is buying a two unit property, living in one side and renting out the other, they can put as little as 5% down, okay? Oh. If they're buying a three or four unit property, they have to put at least 10% down, okay? And if they're buying over a four unit property, it then becomes a commercial um, entity and uh, lenders start disappearing like cockroaches when the light comes on so <laughs> minimum it's, 20 possibly more yeah. commercial lending fees on yeah the yeah so it's a little different but you know there's lots of lenders that tracy has uh, access to that run a wide range of how much income you can use and the more income you need to use to qualify that mortgage on the rental income um tracy will find the appropriate place to put that um so first national um will you know we're we, we use 50 percent. we're a little conservative i give you yeah. that um but there, there are there many months that it's not rented right? yeah so you got a lot for that yeah again that does seem to be a problem <laughs> not right, right now, now. not no, right now but now. <laughs> yeah but but there are like there's lots of options so so my my advice to you guys is if you have a client that's doing that yeah it's a great option it really is wonderful is. you look at what has happened in places like Toronto and Vancouver as prices have risen there they have definitely embraced the fact that we call it the Vancouver rule of you know having a rental unit to offset your mortgage yeah. so talk to Tracy Especially about those buyers. yeah it's a it's a great option it really is um, and she has she has much more than me just turning to. And you to. could do purchase plus if you're you know to yep. do the basement if it isn't already a second unit you could make one. Yep. People are doing that as well. Yep. Exactly. Exactly. So. There was something changed there a couple of years ago where they're they're allowing standalone um, like individual units um, on the property. Uh, it, it got talked about in a great deal of detail and people allowed it. Um, the problem is nobody's really done it. So like having a granny suite that's not attached to the house, it just sits a standalone rental mm -hmm. unit on the property. Um, heard lots about that when it initially happened. I think I've seen one application. Really? For it. Yeah. 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 That's um, where my house is. I built my mother and nanny pod. Yeah. And then that's where she lives. Yeah, exactly. She doesn't. <laughs> yeah. And it'll be a rental. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I'm not done. I'm just closing that because I'm closing it. I'm done with this. Um, yeah, anything else? Thanks. Any other questions? Nothing? Okay. Great. Perfect. Well, if you have anything afterwards and, you, and it's for me, just go through Tracy and uh, and she'll reach out to me to ask me the questions. I'll get back to her on Monday because today's... <laughs> 
today's a little busy. I'll get back to you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. yeah, exactly. Well, thank you, everybody, for your thank time, you and so I appreciate much. it. And yeah, yeah. and good luck this spring. Have patience. <laughs> meditate. It's uh, we'll get through it. Yeah. Oh, I I wanted to ask Tracy. Sure. Are you seeing any problems now with the interest rates creeping up? Like, is it going to move those poor little <laughs> babies that are already? Came yes. Down? It's already affecting qualifying rate. Okay. Yep. So you're doing a variable rate mortgage. The qualifying rate is the same. 5.25 is what they're qualifying. So that's what's going to show affordability in, in you know, housing's eyes. Um, they may feel different as they see those increase, but if you're doing a five-year fixed or a fixed rate, it's the rate plus 2% or the qualifying 5.25, whichever's higher, that's always higher. Like yeah. you're looking at a rate five-year fixed of 4.04, .04, so they're qualifying at 6.04 instead of 5.25. So with every rate hike, qualifying rate is getting higher as well. Yeah. I, I have Which is squeezing. So yeah. so this is just making the people that the middle class that wants to afford a house pushing Harder them and down. Yeah. And then the people with the money. Yeah. They can, can still afford housing. Exactly. All so doing the government is, said this was to help the middle class. But no. Well, okay. Let's let's not blame the government for rate hikes <laughs> so quickly. Inflation. Um, if you want well, to afford inflation, inflation yeah. I know. Your, yeah, the if war you, in Ukraine, COVID, yeah, if COVID, you wanna, the war. Yeah, yeah, if you want to point the finger at things, um, the Bank of Canada has raised their rate, okay? Yeah, yeah. Which has affected the prime lending rate, okay? Mm -hmm. Which can have an indirect effect on fixed mortgage rates. And it's going to get a little heady, but bear with me. But the biggest thing that's driving rates up is stuff that is happening outside of Canada and that is affecting Canada. It's not necessarily our government or our policymakers or the Bank of Canada making changes to, to what they're doing. They're not telling us to raise rates, but there are certain things that we use as barometers to where rates may be that have continued to go up. And one of those is something called bond yields. It's the resale market for Canadian, like Canada Savings Bonds, like really what I'm talking about, but they're sold on a very, very like trillion dollar kind of transaction basis. Those bond yields are, have just gone through the roof. And, you know, as bond prices go down or up, the stock market goes down or up, these things are all affected. I'm not an expert on this, but I know I know when I get a report that said the bond yields went up, I rates know are rates are can follow. Now we're been fairly stable this week, so we're probably not seeing a rate hike. There was a couple of weeks there, two, three times a week. Yeah. Rate getting we, notifications, oh rates are going Since the 1st of March, we've seen... It's trying to slam through pre-approvals yeah. to yeah. get a rate hold. Well, yeah. it, and what's hard, too, is like with gas going up, then transport and getting goods and services goes up, and yeah. then so the cost of living for these families now in their mortgages. Yeah. yeah. And now the groceries are higher, and yeah. you know, yeah. so it's awful. I really feel for young people. Yeah. I do, too. And as I said, young people are being priced as They're the market. ones who are feeling the biggest yeah. impact, and yes. it's sad. Yep, exactly. The hope though, and are you hearing the same, that the projections are that over the next two years there'll be steady climb, and then what I'm reading is they're expecting almost a plateau after everything gets ahead of inflation, et cetera, yep. and then hopefully they're going to plateau, and maybe even then, maybe prime and rates will go down a bit. I'm, obviously, I'm just going by uh, again, material that I'm reading. I, I've been around this long enough. I've been in the business 30 years. I've seen rates of 14.5%, and that yeah. was a good interest rate at the time. Anything under 10 is a good interest rate, believe it or not. Um, but just think back to 2008, the average five year mortgage rate was 5.75%. Yeah. 5.75%. But we just, just came out of pandemic rates, five year yeah. fixed at 1.69. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, and now they're 4.04. So, yeah. You know, when you look at it reasonably and realize that it's still not a high rate, it really isn't, as to your point. It's just when we're used to those rates, they seem 
Well, my first rate was, I can't remember, it was over five. Yeah. Mine was, mine was seven. I bought. Yeah, However, seven, seven and a half. The I bought was $56,000. <laughs> so it's pretty easy to Nin pay that. $95,000 <laughs> yeah. and it was seven and a half percent. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, now you're looking at a $2,000 a month mortgage on it. Yeah. Anything. 430000 you know, yeah. mortgage. You're looking at two grand a month. Yeah. yeah. And, and most brokers will sit there and they will... They will tell their clients that an adjustable rate or a variable rate mortgage is the way to go. And I agree. It, and it totally. definitely is. Yeah. There is some uncertainty because your payments will go up. Yeah. But historically, think, it's always ahead of fixed. Yeah. It's there's a almost a two percent gap between a fixed rate and a variable rate, and you got to think about that as variable rates go up, so do fixed rates. Yeah. Okay, and they will climb at the same basic length. Uh, length. So even when your client is getting into a payment that they don't like, when they go to lock in that adjustable or variable higher. rate, they're locking into a higher interest rate. Yeah. It's it's a great vehicle to ride out an economic storm. And First National is prime minus 90, where I believe most of the top five banks are prime minus 55. Mm -hmm. So it's a really good discount. Yep. Yep. That's good. Good to yeah. know. Low yep. penalties. Variable is always only three months interest yep. and a discharge fee. So there's lots of yeah. Lots of benefits to it. Yeah. If you can handle, you know, know that you got to have a little extra in. If you're one of my clients, and I'm sure most are the same, I know all TMG, but you get a newsletter. When I'm notified, we send out a group newsletter to all clients to let them know the rates are rising. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so there are I mean, it's yeah. not like you, you, you're, you're going to miss when rates go up. It's yeah. everywhere. So. I've even sent people the schedule, the Bank of Canada Prime schedule, when they review. And we know June 1st. It looks like it's going up again by half. Yeah, it's going up. It's going up. May we're raising it May first. Some other lenders have already raised it. So yeah. you know we're going from two point seven to three point two, but we're still giving ninety basis points difference off that. Yeah. So it's so you're uh, still well under the best yeah. Fix. It's uh, I'll tell you, <laughs> I I've got a good rate on a fixed mortgage right now. But if I was jumping into this market market and I've got fee to clay, man, I do not like change. That would be the thing I would do. Yeah, very I am. I am absolutely one hundred percent sure. That's what I'm sure. doing. Mine's yep. up for renewal in a couple months, and mine's fixed right now. But it was a low fixed at the time, yes. yep. and I knew I wasn't doing anything. But I'll be going variable. And remember, we're qualifying those clients as if they were paying five point two five percent. Yeah, right. Or six point so. zero four. If yeah, yep. on variable. variable. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. yeah, yeah. So we're qualifying as if that that rate is what's. 3.2 minus 90, 2.3. We're yeah. basically almost doubling their... Yeah, 2.3. What, yeah. the, what they what should be able to afford. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 You no, know, it depends, right? You're going to have travelers. You're going to have people who die out every single night of the week. You're going to... So that's their own, right? Just because yeah. some people say, I can't afford it. And I, yeah. yeah, but what can you cut back on? Exactly. What are you doing in your life? <laughs> yes. yep. If you're like my sister, every time she goes out, she tells me she never owns anything and she comes home with a bag. She shops every day. You know, Terry. <laughs> yes. She's the one. She's like, I'm, I just never shop. You did yesterday. <laughs> or my son that buys berries not on sale, which horrifies me. <laughs> was he buying blueberries and strawberries? Yes, he was. Oh. My husband said he, he had COVID and he, he gave Keith a list and he went to the store. And on that list, I looked at the list and I said, did I not bring this child up right? <laughs> he He's got things on the list that aren't on sale: strawberries, blueberries, raspberries. Like, it is not. But the, it's apples not the are on sale. He says I don't want apples, but they're on sale. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's not the season, darling. You're getting apples. <laughs> Do you know that you can buy two kinds of frozen blueberries for the same as you can buy the. Uh, Absolutely. Yes, yes. of course no, you do. It doesn't taste the same to him, apparently. No. <laughs> I have to go to Oxford Blueberries and get a bulk. Yeah. Yeah. Well, again, thank you, everybody, for thank allowing me to come much. here. I appreciate your time. Yeah. Yes, it was great. Thank awesome. you guys. Thank for you so much. much. Thank you. I got to wave this really? way. Yes. <laughs> it'll be on YouTube and taped it. Yes. Uh, so anyone that missed it can log in. Yeah. And yeah, I was happy great. to answer questions. Yep. Yeah, so. Beautiful. Thanks, okay. guys. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Better turn off the computer. <laughs>